Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Patrick Hine. And I'm Nate McCarrick. And today you'll experience firsthand what's possible with the QSIS platform and ecosystem. In fact, let's take this room as an example. The goals of this room are simple. To tell you about the pillars of our platform, have you interact with QSIS in some real fun ways, and most importantly, to seamlessly automate the entire experience. For starters, can we get a volunteer to walk over to that touch screen over there and type in your name and the company that you work for? Go ahead, someone get going and get started on that. Now, while they're working on that, it would be great if the room around us was smart enough to know when we're all ready to start. But it looks like we have an open door, so you must not be ready to start. Once everyone is in the room, can someone please close the door so we can get started? Door closed. Enjoy your tour. Voila, the entire room automatically configures itself. We're warming up our cameras, controlling displays, triggering media players, setting audio, adjusting the lighting, you name it. That's QSIS, Cloud Monitored Audio, Video, and Control. It starts with the OS that drives and manages a multitude of native QSIS products. Additionally, its standard IT architecture and a set of development tools called QSIS Open enable an entire partner ecosystem, as well as a worldwide community of QSIS programmers and developers. I know that's a lot to unpack there. Let's take a quick look at the individual pieces. Let's start with the QSIS OS, which serves as the software foundation for the platform. It's the brains of the system, containing an integrated audio engine, video engine, and control engine, which means no need to program each of these to communicate to each other. It's driven by a singular processing device known as the QSIS Core. If the QSIS OS is the brains, then the QSIS Core processor is absolutely the heart. Every core runs on the same QSIS OS, but you choose your core based on the size and complexity of your installations. Some core models have enough power to scale across entire sprawling installations like universities or corporate campuses, while other models like the Core Nano have been right-sized for rooms like this. We even offer virtualized cores that can run the QSIS OS on the PC or server of your choosing, even something like this. Whether your room needs microphones, cameras, touchscreens, maybe even non-networked devices, QSIS makes it simple to integrate it and control it, so you can either automate it or put those controls directly in the hands of your end users. Go ahead and take a look at the touchscreens on the walls and make any changes to this room yourself. Our complete portfolio includes conference cameras, loudspeakers, I.O. devices, touch panels, software feature and capability expansion licenses, along with secure cloud-based solutions to monitor and manage your AV system. Using native QSIS products ensures easier integration and smoother user experiences because everything is just designed to work together. But we have no illusions that we can manufacture every imaginable peripheral out there. That's why the QSIS Partner Ecosystem was designed to empower technology partners and developers around the world to create QSIS technology integrations. QSIS partners and non-partners alike can all enable third-party development using a QSIS Open Toolbox, which uses standard industry protocols along with developer tools like Lua, HTML5, CSS, a completely open API, and an open online developer forum called QSIS Communities. In short, QSIS makes it as easy as possible to integrate just about any third-party hardware and software products that you can imagine. Just like this text-to-speech plugin. It is one o'clock in the afternoon and Jimmy from JMI would like to get started. So, that's QSIS in a nutshell. QSIS OS, QSIS products, QSIS partners, and QSIS Open. Now, behind these doors, your tour guide will show you cutting-edge QSIS high-impact spaces designed through the lenses of some of the most leading UC platforms available. In the interest of time, let's try to hold all your questions until the end, where there will be plenty of staff to help you out. Until then, enjoy the tour, and welcome to QSIS. So this is our immersive collaboration space, which is all driven off a Microsoft Teams room integration. When the user comes into a room, they just want to press a button on a panel, get into their meeting, and have everything work flawlessly off the bat. And that is what we aim to deliver with the QSIS ecosystem. Now, uh, this room in particular that you're seeing around you is our Microsoft Teams signature room, um, which 
aims to deliver an immersive and inclusive experience for all participants involved in the meeting. Whether that be the professional camera quality coming from one of our QSIS NC110 cameras, ensuring that everyone in the room is in frame, to delivering the video on the screen in front of you right here. However, audio is also a very important factor in creating an immersive and inclusive meeting. And with QSIS, we are now one of the very first to be delivering Microsoft Teams spatial audio solution, mapping the, uh, the audio in the direction of the speakers on screen relative to their position. And in fact, we can demo that for you right now. Call started. Hey everyone, I know we have a lot to cover in this meeting, but I just wanted to introduce a new face on the call. Everyone, please welcome Megan. Hey, hey Megan. Hi, Megan. Hi. How's it going so far? It's, it's good. It's great. I'm nervous. No need to be nervous. We're just people selling pet rocks. <laughs> Thank you. I... Did you just say pet rocks? All right. Down to business. So R and D. Where are we at? The new tech looks promising. Should be ready by Q1. New tech for rocks. Great. Marketing. What's new? Us. We're trending through the roof. Really? How? Why? Excellent. Sales. Customers are dying to get their hands on these things. What? We've never seen anything like it. All right, then. Megan, any questions? All of them. That's great. Good meeting, everyone. All right. Thanks, all. Take care. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. So, QSIS is not only delivering high quality audio from the remote speakers out into the near end, but as well ensuring that we are delivering professional quality uh, audio from the near end to the remote participants as well whether that be through the ceiling tile microphone or our own tabletop NMT1s, QSIS can facilitate this audio delivery using our ecosystem. Even in a, while very stylish room uh, like you see around us, there is a lot of glass and not so much acoustic paneling. Don't worry though, because even though this would facilita facilitate echoes in the room, QSIS has more than enough uh, processing power to account for these echoes and apply the right amount of DSP for high quality performance. Another thing to bear in mind with a Microsoft Teams certified solution with QSIS is not only this panel that is delivering the Microsoft Teams room controls, we can also deliver a QSIS UCI as a second page experience to give the user access to all the controls of everything that QSIS is interfacing with, whether that be the cameras, the lighting or the help desk, anything else that QSIS might be working with, we can provide that on the same platform that the customer is uh, operating the controls. Uh, you may notice as well that if anything goes wrong in the room, perhaps this microphone going offline, then we can instigate a help desk report off to our remote service so the user doesn't have to do any live troubleshooting themselves on, uh, themselves on site and just through this panel request support with a single press help of a button. Help desk requested. So that's everything I have to show for you guys in this room. You've got plenty more to see on the rest of your tour if you'd like to follow through to the next room where you can learn about QSIS control. This room is all about control, control of the things in a conference room like this that we need to control and the ways that we can control different devices. Now, first thing to notice, we have two different rooms in here, room A and room B. So we have two different little small project rooms that could be combined or separated by a large air wall, a big accordion kind of wall we split up to make two different rooms. Right now, they are in a combined state. We are running Zoom rooms in here on our Logitech Tap controller. I'm gonna start a session. You can see that we've got a meeting going on using our NC110 camera cameras down beneath the displays. We've also got a couple of steerable PTZ cameras up in the sky. I can deliver any of those cameras and the audio in this room to the Zoom app using USB bridging. And then here in the app controller, I can come on and make some changes on the camera. And look at that, I can do the rest of my presentation just like this, hello. So uh, driving the cameras to, to Zoom is not that much of a flex for us. Obviously we can control our own cameras because we manufacture these cameras but there's a lot of things in this room we don't manufacture. We don't manufacture these LEDs on the floor. We don't manufacture the lighting controller up in the sky or the shades that run that engine over there, right? And if someone walks into this room, I don't want them running over here just to find the shade controller. And then meanwhile, the lighting guy installed his design over on this wall and the HVAC's over on the other wall over here. That's a lot of running around. I wanna make sure that someone can control everything in the room from one pane of glass and preferably the same pane of glass that they're always using to use the conference app. So I can come in here, find the room controls for this particular room, hit X, and we'll, let's move the shades up. With a single tap, I can send a command over to them, we'll let the sunlight in, and we'll get the good breezy convention center air in here. Now, 
That's control. We gotta be able to control third-party devices in the way that they are controlled. Like some devices might want serial commands, GPIO, uh, TCP or UDP. Uh, we might be writing complicated Lua scripting to go back and forth with third-party devices. You know, a lot of the times we work with manufacturers to build plugins for their devices. And plugins are little software widgets that get installed into QSYS so that we can control their devices as if it were a native QSYS device. Very easy, no, no code or low code options there. Uh, however, control is just pure function, and I prefer my rooms to have a little bit of art to them, and for art to be there, we need some automation. So think about muting this room. I'm gonna back it up here on the Zoom and mute it. Call muted. Great, it's muted. We've all lived in conference rooms. We know how to mute a call. But when we muted this room, we also played an announcement up in the sky that you heard, right? We're changing the screen up on the, on the display so we all know we're in a mute state. Uh, the cameras up in the air have turned around and looked at the wall. So anyone who's in here knows instinctively that they are in video mute because you don't have to wonder, hey, is that camera still looking at me or not? Because clearly it isn't. That's the kind of subtle changes in the room that we can make and automate to give the room a more natural and intuitive experience. Same is true with our air wall. So we didn't ship a whole air wall out here. I'm using one one hundredth of an air wall. Uh, I'm going to grab this and close the rooms and divide them. And QSYS will know about it. Air wall closed. Reconfiguring rooms. Now, there's no real magic going on here. There's just a magnetic contact closure on the wall. Sends a wire up to QSYS, gives it a one or a zero, right? But that one and zero requires a lot of weight. We got to do all kinds of things. I got to make sure this camera over here is no longer routable to that Zoom session. I got to make sure that this microphone is no longer mixing the audio of the people in this room over here to the people on their far end. You can see we're in a different Zoom session entirely. If I'm changing the lights on this side, I don't want the lights to change over there. So I got to reroute the audio, the video, and the control based on the information of the room. Now that's actually really easy to do on the QSYS side. But if we left that to the hands of a user, they are going to mess it up because humans they like to mess things up, let's face it. So we gotta take that off of their plates. We can automate the room. The room knows what state it's in and it does the work. Air wall open. Rooms one and two have been combined. Thank you, Haley. That is the magic experience we want for the users. We wanna make sure that they don't have to come in and configure the room. It's just already in the state they want it to be in and it works intuitively. That's what we wanna give them and that's what they deserve, right? All right. You're Thank you. You're on to room three where we'll talk about lecture spaces. Okay, so my name is James and in here we're going to be learning about QSYS for learning spaces. But also we're going to be talking about large multi-purpose rooms like this for corporate installations as well and seeing how we can use them in a few different ways. Particularly when you're in higher education, if you're a teacher, you really want to, you just want to focus on teaching. You want to come in, you want to deliver your content and the AV should just work perfectly. So that's what we're going to do here with QSYS. I'm going to go into teacher mode here at the lectern. We're going to use Google Meet and we're going to of course use QSYS USB bridging to feed all of the audio and all of the video from this room into Google Meet for a remote learning class. So let's start the class. Starting class. Okay, so here we are. We've got my remote participants and I've got people in the room and straight away you can see that I'm centered perfectly in the frame and this is really key. So when we're doing remote learning, we want to make sure that the teacher is always centered, always seen, and always heard as well. Now here we're using a Sennheiser Team Connect Ceiling 2 mic, so I'm always heard anywhere in the room. But also, we're able to use QSYS Automatic Camera Preset Recall to make sure I'm always seen. So, if I move around, maybe I come over to here to talk about something on this side of the screen, you can see that the microphone recognizes that, and then we can recall the correct preset on the correct camera in the room. But also, if I want to participate with the students, or maybe a student has a question and we want to show that on the call as well, I can stand here amongst the students, maybe help them out with something on their desk, and again, we'll see that that's just relayed to the far end as well. So that's for higher education. Everything's automatic, everything just works. But you might also want a room like this in a corporate installation, maybe for a room like Mark from Google was talking about, one of their tech talk rooms. Perhaps you want to use it for a broadcast or to do some kind of product launch event. So with QSYS, we can change the whole thing now into a different mode. Here I have my broadcast desk. And we haven't been using any of this equipment so far, but at the touch of a button, I can put this room into broadcast mode. 
Broadcast mode engaged. So now we completely change the configuration of the room. If we look around, we've changed the lighting, we change the video configuration, we've also changed what we're doing with the audio. For example, with, with the, the audio, audio, we are now taking all of the sound out of QSYS over analog in this case, into this QSYS TouchMix 30 Pro mixing console. And of course, we can use Dante as well to do something similar. Also, we're using all of the SDI feeds from these cameras in parallel with the network stream and bringing that into this SDI multi-view here. And we've got this Scarhoy PTZ Fly joystick where we can then control each camera fully manually and send that to the far end, just like a TV broadcast. Lastly, we're using the video and the audio engine from QSYS, feeding it into this Epifan Pearl, and then that's going online so anyone can participate in our event from anywhere. So I suppose the key takeaway would be that we've got the same room, but we're able to use it in a number of different ways, all reconfigurable via software for higher education, for corporate, and any kind of event that you want to run with this room. All right, you guys have got one more demo to do through that door over there. Have a good time. So if you've logged into our QSYS Reflect Enterprise Manager dashboard before, this view is probably fairly familiar to you. What we have here is a bird's eye view of our entire system that we've set up here at ISE. We've got all of our rooms broken down by cores. Remember that a core makes up a system, a system makes up a site, and a site makes up an organization. You can then go through and invite people in to either view or administer by site, system, or organization. But we don't just want to see our systems at a glance. We want to be able to garner more information while we're remotely accessing our cores. So we can even drill in and find things like the event log. We can see items that have happened inside the core while we've been using it. We can even go so far as to remotely access user control interfaces that we have set up just for diagnostics and help. These don't just have to be forward-facing UCIs. These can be ones that were made specifically to help us diagnose issues that might come up. If you'll recall, earlier in the presentation, we had triggered a help request for audio when we were in the Microsoft Teams room. Well, by using this remotely accessible UCI, we can actually go through and send a response back to the touch panel in the room, creating a sort of two-way communication and letting our user know the status of their request. But how did we get that help request? When we triggered that request off the panel, we also posted a, a webhook into a Microsoft Teams channel. What this did is this let us know that we needed audio assistance from our collaboration room. Not only do we know that we need the assistance, but we've provided some links for both the system status and a direct link to that core's user control interfaces. This allows us to go through, we can pull up that request, see what the issue may be, and send a response back into the room. Lastly, many of our users integrate with a data aggregation system such as ServiceNow. Thanks to our partners at Volteo, we now have a fully functioning plugin allowing us to see core and peripheral status as well as real-time activity streams right from your existing ServiceNow dashboard. Even if you don't use ServiceNow, if you use another vendor or perhaps have an in-house aggregation service, the greatest thing about QSYS Reflect Enterprise Manager is that there is a fully open and documented API. So from any source, you can go through and access this information. So that wraps up a little bit about how we can remotely monitor and manage our systems. <laughs>